From our digital broadcast center, welcome to the Resurrection Center, located in Indian Orchard, Massachusetts. Have you always tried to do the best thing but wondered where your blessing was? Have you seen others be rewarded while it seems that you are left behind? Did you wonder why sometimes the unfaithful seem more blessed than you? Have you wondered why you struggle more to succeed where others don't have to? Today, we'll answer the question, where is my blessing? With blessings, I come to you from the Resurrection Center with my adoring pastors, Jose and Melly Martinez. I head up the Bravehearted Ministries at the Resurrection Center, and my name is David Ewan. Welcome to the Bravehearted. Today, we'll ask the question, where is my blessing? Yes, those in a walk with Christ still fall short in their faith and ask that question. It's all good. I get it. We live in uncertain and competitive times that often people will ask the question, where is my blessing? It's okay and it's quite normal, but easy to get back on track to know where your blessing is. We're going to help you with that. And that's what we're going to do today, put you back on track. It's a common frustration among people when there is the perception that hard work does not pay off. This might be seen as something that's difficult to accept and understand. So this might even be seen, for example, you work hard at your job, but the other person gets the promotion. Or you work hard for that great opportunity while others seem to achieve it with less struggle. You know you are doing the right thing and you ask, where is my blessing? Well, let me tell you, God has given each person a purpose with a plan. And I'm going to read to you Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. It's one of my favorite scriptures. So that may bring up the question, what is God's plan for us? How do we become ready? What are we to do? What is the best way to the prosperous future? Where is my blessing, you may be asking. So again, God has given each person a purpose. That purpose is a gift. Remember that the purpose God has for you is the gift that you have been given. We have the choice to receive it or deny it. Many people don't know that we have that choice that we can receive the gift, we can accept it, or we may throw it away, we may den deny it. You see, the book of Genesis teaches us that man is given free will and that we have choices that determine our future. We have the free will to make good choices and we have the free will to make bad choices. God allows that. God has given us free will. So we have the free will to make bad choices as well as good choices. The book of Genesis also tells us of the consequences of the free will to make those bad choices. I'll read Genesis chapter two, verse 16 through 17. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. The death being talked about in Genesis more relates to spiritual death. That type of death gives a feeling of lost in a space of darkness that is hard to escape. You see, there are principles to which we are guided in terms of how we conduct ourselves given that we have free will so that we make, may make the right choices. In Galatians chapter five, verse 13, the scripture reads, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather serve one another humbly in love. It's the principle shown in the book of Galatians that we often forget. Very often, people who seek out their blessing have the perception that they are working hard to achieve the goals they desire. 
it's important to note that if those goals are not God's goals for you, then you'll be working hard for a long time. Remember, God has plans for you. It's not your plans, it's God's plans. But let's assume you are working on the right thing. Is it the right time? You see, timing is everything. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, the scripture reads, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. You see, God never promised us that our life on earth would be easy, but he did say there is a time and a season for everything. And with every season, it is a journey. That is what life is, a journey. It's not the destination that is important. It's the journey. Each journey provides an experience. That experience is life. The destination is only the end. You see, Jesus had a destination, and that is what created Christianity. We know we can not be alone in our challenges. We really aren't. You see in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, the scripture reads, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And you know, as God has us as children, we are guided to a path of good. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, the scripture reads, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called, who are, who are the called, according to God's purpose. And that's in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. If we do what God has called us to do, then we can have the comfort in knowing that our journey will be strengthened through Christ. If we drift away from the lit path through the darkness, then we will fall into darkness. That is what we must watch out for. The spiritual guidance that a church body provides keeps us on the path of light. Put more focus on your path and worry not about how others perceive you. Stay in the light. There is the old adage, maybe you've heard of it. If you are taken for granted, then you are doing your job. I'll say that again. If you're taking it for granted, then you are doing your job. That means you have reached or exceeded expectations in a way that concern or worry is no longer a factor. The removal of concern or worry is where the seed of being taken for granted comes from. You see, in this situation, you're held to a higher expectation. Let me give you an example. Imagine you have a job where you arrive to work early all the time. It's an expectation, but for you, that's normal. It's normal for you, but it's an expectation. Now this, check this out. Let's say you have a colleague who arrives late all the time. It's a routine for your colleague. It's normal for your colleague, but it's a routine. Did you see that? I'm talking about expectation and routine. Some routines do not meet expectations. Let's explore this example more. You see, those who do right and meet expectations are held to a higher expectation. They are held to a higher standard. That's true once you aim high. It is expected that you continue to aim high. If you are seen dropping to the level of your colleague, then you will be seen as failing as you are no longer aiming high. You're no longer meeting the standard that you have set for yourself. And that standard is the expectation or exceeding expectations. 
Now, listen to this. For your colleague who arrives late, in our example, it is seen as a routine and therefore it is not a failure. Not a failure beyond the failure that it already is. What is routine for others is a failure for you. But you're not supposed to compare yourself to others. You only have the time and energy to focus on yourself. Let's take this one step further. One day, the colleague who is normally late arrives on time or early. One day. That colleague who's always late, today, they show up on time. People take notice. It's a great recognition. On this one day, your colleague has met expectation. You, on the other hand, are not noticed. You are not given recognition. There's not a change because you already meet the expectation. There's no change. There's no special recognition. Inadvertently, your colleague has called attention to the change toward the positive and received a reward. That reward is recognition or an observance. In this case, there's a change that's recognized. If on the next day, your colleague returns to the habit of that uh, they are late, then their situation returns to the routine. Granted, it's a failure, but to them, it's a routine. It's getting back to what they used to do, and it's not a failure beyond the failure of a routine that did not meet expectation. Although not meeting expectation, the pattern has gone back to a routine. Again, it's a pattern. So it is not construed as a failure beyond what was already happening. Routines do not have consequences as it would for you if you started to come late. But that's not your worry. You don't have the time or the energy to worry about other people. You should focus on yourself because you should aim high because there's a reward for it in you. You see, routines that do not meet expectation are not likely given a penalty or a punishment because it was a starting baseline. I'm using the example of your colleague who comes in late and that's their routine. You see, often people who fail to meet expectation will sit comfortably on their starting baseline as a routine to avoid the requirement of meeting expectation. Think of that. They stick at a routine of not meeting expectation because it gives them the ability to avoid the requirement of meeting expectation. You, on the other hand, have already been given the requirement of meeting the expectation, so you can't fall below that. A routine that is below expectation does not have a reward. Be aware of that. A routine that is below the expectation does not have a reward. As for you who do not fall to the routine of not meeting expectation, you don't want to fall into that trap. You don't want that. Now, if on the other hand, your colleague stays off that baseline of routine of not meeting expectation and does finally meet expectation or exceeds it, the reward will be given to reinforce meeting that expectation. It's good for them. We should want the best in others. Now, you might see that reward in that reinforcement. You might not see that reward for yourself, but that's because you don't need that reinforcement. See, but in the long run, you're going from where you are to even higher. Your colleague that we're using in this example is struggling to go from their routine of going beyond, below I should say, expectation and then trying to reach expectation. So they're being incentivized, receiving an incentive 
to stay at the baseline rather than going beyond it. You have the ability to go beyond it because you're already there. So you've met the expectation, but you did not receive a reward in the same way your colleague has. Keep in mind, in the long run, you will end up receiving the even greater reward. The best rewards are the ones you have to wait for. Again, if you are taken for granted, then you are doing your job. There's no reason to get angry. There's no reason to get jealous. Just remember that waiting is a reward for the best reward. That's the blessing. See, in the end, you will receive in even the greater blessing. Using the example we have been discussing, you are held to a higher expectation, a much higher standard, because you are meeting expectations consistently. It's your assumed nature. So more is expected out of you because you are held to a higher standard. For you to go beyond expectation and be recognized, you have to work even harder than your colleague who could just barely meet expectation. That is where the struggle seems to be, but that is where the greater reward is. Remember that. It's what is built in your character, which shows the kind of worthiness you have. Isn't it better to be worthy? Work hard for that. People who limit themselves to routines below expectations often fall short of the potential that God had for them. We are reminded in the book to look that uh, we are, I should say, uh, we are reminded in the book of Luke, I should say, that little is little and that includes the rewards in life. So let me tell you about Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. We are reminded and instructed to keep diligent in our hard work and good effort. We are reminded in 1st of Corinthians chapter 4 verse 12 through 13. We work wearily with our own hands to earn a living. We bless those who curse us. We are patient with those who abuse us. We appeal gently when evil things are said about us, yet we are treated like the world's garbage, like everybody's trash, right up to the present moment. You see, as Christians, we are part of a beautiful body of Christ. Our hard work doing the right thing is not a waste of time. In 1st of Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, the scripture reads, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. In the proper time, God's great time, your reward will come true. You'll see it. Patience and self-control is a virtue that has been bestowed upon you as part of the fruits of the Spirit. So don't give up what you are doing that is right. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 the scripture reads, let us not become wearily in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So don't give up. In John chapter 5 verse 16, but Jesus answered them, my father has been working until now, and I too am working. You are not alone. Be within the kingdom of the Lord and keep going. From the Bravehearted Ministries, I'm David Ewan, and this is the Resurrection Center.